Evening YouTube, this is Inner Harmony here, otherwise known as Dan, otherwise known as W4PTS. That is my amateur radio call sign. Um, I've been an amateur radio operator for uh, about 11 or 12 years now. I think 11 years actually. Almost 12. And uh, I hold an amateur extra class license. Um, I originally wanted to do a video series on introduction to HF radio for those who might be having a little bit of difficulty making the transition from uh, uh, say you know a lower class license where all they had is, is like a two meter FM transceiver handheld uh, to putting up a station such as such as what you see behind me here um, which is really quite a simple uh, HF station but a pretty effective one too um, and then I kind of started thinking well there's so many different um, rigs out there. There's so many different um, situations, living arrangements, um, that kind of thing, that you personally are going to have to figure out all this stuff on your own. And that's actually really uh, part of the fun of amateur radio, is figuring all of that out on your own. So I'm not really going to get into that, other than maybe just a few basic tips along the way. Um, and so, you know, that said, uh, you know, maybe we'll, I'll just, you know, throw up some videos now and then on some specific operating things that I enjoy such as contesting or DX hunting um, that kind of stuff um, but I think what I'll do is uh, first I'll just uh, take you on a quick tour around my shack and uh, show you what uh, show you what I'm working with here so let's take a look okay so here is basically the whole uh, interior of the shack here this is just my desk right here <clears throat> and I have a pretty compact setup here it's just a very simple uh, basic well I wouldn't say simple it's a pretty complex machine uh, HF uh, VHF UHF transceiver and uh, you can see that light flashing it's receiving uh, some Morse code right now up above it we have an automatic antenna tuner and next to it is the power supply which runs the station uh, down under here that's the straight key and right here is a set of paddles uh, for Morse code here on the computer I got my logging program and over here we've got a program called CWGET uh, which I mainly use for uh, contesting and so forth uh, helps me get by the guys who are sending it uh, 25 or 30 words per minute and I can't possibly copy uh, uh, at that speed just yet. I'm still fairly new to CW so need all the help I can get. <clears throat> at any rate that's the station. Um, outside I have a uh, multi-band dipole. It's a Cobra ultralight up about 40 feet uh, over the house and uh, for VHF and UHF I have a copper pipe J pole and it works fairly well. So that's the shack and now back to the shack okay as you can see it's a pretty simple station but uh, um, the radio is very versatile and uh, it, it happens to work very well for me and uh, even now that we're in the bottom of the sunspot cycle and even sometimes it seems like we're, in, we're below the bottom of the sun, sunspot cycle uh, sometimes the bands are just uh, unbelievably dead so I have not ever worked on HF radio uh, where the sunspot, where we're in the uh, upswing, or and at the top of the sunspot cycle, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I will offer a couple of things right off the bat. Uh, number one, there's an article that I suggest that you read, um, and I found it in sort of a roundabout way. I got a couple of these D expedition videos, and um, uh, one to Clipperton Island and one to Bhutan, and one of the operators who was on both of those D expeditions. Uh, his name is Mark. His call sign is ON4WW, and a Belgium operator, and one of the finest ham radio operators anywhere. And um, so I looked up his call sign, and uh, he has a personal website that has a very concise article about uh, uh, operating procedures. Um, and he covers a great deal of ground. Um, it's not a short article, but I, I recommend it to uh, any amateur radio operator. Uh, it's really quite good. 
and I'll touch on some things and uh, that I've come across in that article. Uh, Mark has given me some good ideas as to things I want to actually bring forth in this series. So I'll do that. But uh, please look that up. Uh, uh, you'll find the link on if you go to qrz.com and, and put in his call sign. Uh, and then I think uh, on his page there it'll show a link to his personal page which uh, has a link to this article. Okay. Now, what's the first thing that I would recommend you're doing if you're going to upgrade your license? Uh, do your research, decide what kind of radio, antenna, how you're going to set up your shack, that kind of thing. Do all of that, and if you have done all of that, I would say go ahead and get the minimum equipment that you need so that you can start listening. And you don't need to set up an elaborate antenna just yet because you're not going to be transmitting if you don't have your HF license. But you can certainly listen. Um, the worst antenna in the world is better than no antenna. Always remember that. Uh, you can always do better, but having a bad antenna is better than having no antenna at all. You can even just you know throw a piece of wire out the back of your radio and out the window and uh, just listen. And that's, that's key. Um, listening to uh, the sections of the bands that you'll be able to operate on, listening to the different modes, uh, familiarizing yourself with your radio, that is key because most of today's uh, radios are very complex. Uh, the one that I have, the uh, Yesu FT-857D, it doesn't look like much but it is quite complex and very menu driven and most of today's radios uh, are just like that. So you need to learn all this stuff and it takes a little bit of time. Um, and just listening. You'll form your own opinions as to uh, what's right and what's wrong by the operating procedures you hear and some of the stuff you will learn or have learned uh, when you're taking your uh, tests and um, some of the stuff you won't learn uh, until you start listening. So I absolutely recommend that you spend a good deal of time just listening before you key up uh, your microphone or your uh, keyer. So that's about it for this session and um, I will uh, come up with something else. Uh, we'll get into some more specific aspects and uh, uh, you know maybe I'll just uh, throw in some demonstrations of, of a couple things and then expound on that and um, we'll see how it goes. This is just going to be kind of a fly by the seat of the pants uh, kind of video series but uh, I hope to have a little bit of fun and I hope that uh, somebody gets something educational out of it. You know, uh, We'll see. Anyway. So 73, and uh, hope to see you on the band sometime. Take care.